Hello everybody, so today we are going to learn how to do a wet to dry dressing. I'm going to explain all of the steps from the beginning to the end. So, and then I also am going to share like what everything is. Alright, so in the beginning, before you even go inside, what you're going to do is go look at the physician's order to see what you need to do or how, to, how the physician wants you to dress the wound. So here we have a pretend physician's order. The physician order says we're going to dress it from wet to dry. Okay. So now that we have looked at the physician's order, we're going to um, ask the patient, assess their pain level. So um, if they are in extreme pain, then you want to go ahead and medicate them because doing dressings on a wound can be very, very painful. Okay. So now, um, I'm gonna go in. Hello, Miss Smith. My name is Jasmine, I'm your nurse today. We're going to be doing a wound dressing. So can you tell me what your pain level is right now? From the scale of zero to 10, 10 being what? 10. Okay, so Miss Smith says her pain is a 10. So we're gonna go ahead and medicate her and then 30 minutes later, we'll come back and actually do the dressing. So 30 minutes has passed. Now I'm going to get my supplies. So today we're gonna need a dressing tray. This is sterile, so this will be a sterile procedure. Um, yeah. Sorry. Okay, and then we're also gonna need a measure um, uh, I'm not sure what these are called actually, but it's to measure the wound. They also have the ruler where you can use the ruler like this. They both do the same thing. You'll need your irrigation tray. You'll also need some saline or sterile water. This is sterile water. Always check the expiration date on this because you don't want to use expired stuff on your patient. This is the wound culture. We're gonna pretend this is sterile because it's not in the package, but it will be in the package, okay? So I'm gonna set everything <laughs> on my table. You'll also need Q-tips to stuff the, um, the gauze inside the wound. Oh, and this came out of the other. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the patient's room, wash my hands, get my PPE, appropriate PPE, so you would need your gloves, your gown, and um, some. If, if it can splash, you can use a mask as well. I also have some gauze sponges. You'll also need an AVP pad. I'll need an ABD pad so I can go and get that. My assistant is going to get my ABD pad. Oh, All right, so we've already introduced ourselves. We got my pants washed and now I'm gonna use my gloves. These are small, so hopefully these fit. Thank you. If that happens, I'll use another glove, but just for the video, we're just going to act like that didn't happen. These are small. So now what we want to go ahead and do is um, we're going to take the old dressing off the patient when doing this. <laughs> You want to pull the patient's skin with it so that you're not tearing the um, skin while you're pulling the tape. So just like this, do not just rip the tape off. If you happen to not um, be able to take the tape off, you can use saline to help loosen the tape. All right, so before you throw it away, you want to look at any type of drainage or blood on this bandage and then throw it away. We're, this is my pretend trash can. 
then we're also going to remove the dressings on the inside. So if there was any drainage or anything here, you would want to look at that too. Throw that away. <clears throat> All right, so Miss Smith, what we're going to do is go ahead and irrigate or clean the um, wound out. I'm going to position you to where... Okay. All right, so I'm going to push you up on this pillow to position you to help me irrigate the wound. Now with this wound we have necrotic here or um, eschar here. We've got some slaw here. Undermining. This would be undermining here. We've got tunneling here and this looks like a bone with some uh, granula. Granula. Okay. Alright. So now we're just going to Feel around for pressure, any type of indentation, which is hardening around the area, tenderness. And we're also going to look at Miss Smith to see if she's in any pain while doing this. Okay, and so now I'm going to go ahead and measure. Okay. She's making sure I'm doing everything correctly. All right, so you can use. I was looking for this. You can use either this ruler or this. So if you were to use this, you will always measure in centimeters. This is width. Width is from head to toe. This being the bot uh, buttocks. So we would say. Starting from this ruler here, this is about 10 centimeters in height, and doing the width is from side to side. So then you would do this is about 8 centimeters for width. Now, to do um, the depth, you would use a q tip. This is how I'll open them. I don't really know if that's appropriate, but whatever. Get one of these cotton swabs, and you're gonna feel around for undermining. Undermining is um, underneath the lip part of the, the pressure injury. You take the Q-tip and find the deepest part, and then take this and measure up against here so then this will be about two centimeters now for undermining with documentation this will be 12 this will be six three and nine so you would say that undermining is from about 11 to 2 if you were to tell your charter on documenting the wound and then the deepest is at 11 then for tunneling, you would use the same um, concept with the Q-tip. Stick it as far as you can. Measure with your ruler. And you would say tunneling is about four centimeters. And document where the wound is. So this would be the sacrum. Okay. So now that we're done documenting and measuring we're going to discard of all of that including your gloves you will wash your hands and now we're going to create our <laughs> sterile field so i'm going to move this stuff out of the way to create room
we're gonna use our privacy here. <laughs> okay, so now, um, with this, it's very important because this is sterile, everything you do, you, you need to make sure you're accurate and precise and watch what you're doing. So, when you open this flap, the shiny part is not sterile. You can touch this part. You want to use this flap and pull it away from your body. So that would be first. And then I try the dog. Okay. Yeah, that's it. This here. And then the last time. Like, I don't know. I just I guess I gotta get over it. I'm gonna press this this shot. Yeah, I like how this is Okay, so now everything is there. You cannot touch anything right here. I can take my gloves out. These are my sterile gloves. When picking this up, you have to be very, very, very careful. What I'm going to do now is move this tray over. Okay, and then. This one has a shiny part as well. I'm just going to turn it. Yeah, Phil, touch this one. It feels like kind of. Okay. And then I'm just going to do like this. I can touch the outside of this tray. And now you make sure you don't touch inside. I'm going to dump everything onto the sterile tube. See, that's one thing I always, that's one of the first things I do. After I do this, I go down. Okay. I'm going to put this here. Yeah. Now I'm going to get my irrigation tray. I'm going to pretend like we didn't open it. And we're going to dump this as well. Being very careful. <laughs> During this time, you can open any extra gauze you may need. And this party, and now I'm going to open my ABD pad. Oh, to the injury. Oh, to the patient. And you ready? Always open away from you, like that. Oh, my culture, we're going to act like it's not open, that it has a package, so I would open it and dump it like that, okay? So, because there's not a lot of room, I'm just going to open my gloves on top of the bed. This is my sterile water. I always have the label with your hand. Make sure it's not expired. I'm gonna pour this in my tray. These are my sterile gloves. Try and hurry up. <laughs> okay. All right. So now I can touch everything on my sterile field. I'm gonna move everything where I want it. These are my ABD pads. I'm at my gauze. Sorry. Okay. So I'm going to put my gauze, I'm going to kind of fluff it and push it, put it in the water. Okay, so 
This is the part where you ringed it out, right? Okay. So, I'm going to leave that there. Now, this is my irrigation kit. I have to put that um, sterile water inside the irrigation. So, one hand will be clean, one hand will be sterile. This will be my clean hand. And so now I'm going to take the sterile water and put inside of the bottle, right? Take this, put this here, this hand is still sterile. So this hand is still sterile. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and irrigate the wound. If you need to move it, always move with your foot. <laughs> I'm just going to use a little bit for this video, but I would come here and drain the wound. Obviously, the water or the yeah the water would drain out from the person so I'm just gonna drain it on this chuck and so now we're gonna use this gauze because this hand is still sterile Right. Oh. And we're going to block this here, just to clean everything out. Okay, and then I guess I'll put it over here. Um, then we're going to use this with our... And then we're going to use this to fluff the gauze out. <laughs> so then we'll come around the barrier. I know this isn't perfect, but I'm just trying to get through this video. So we flushed up, fluffed, and put everything in the wound. You can also use um, this is I am this to tuck inside. The undermining. Yeah, that's what Miss Reed just said. Like, if it's more, like for if this one is more than three milliliters, you would just have to use two syringes. Just make sure that this whole wound is covered. So that would be here. And then, um, you take the dry gauze to cover and then use the ABD pad, the blue line. 
got blues up to the sky, meaning that you want it like this. Place over this here. And then um, take the gloves off. Like this. Dispose of the garbage. Now we're going to get the tape, which we should have gotten the tape off. And write your name, date, and the time you did the dressing. And rip it off. And then a little piece of tape if you want to do the top and the bottom with your name and your date. And then, of course, you would just um, get rid of everything and make sure everything's clean. And that's it. Thank you. Bye.